Black actors you didn't know passed away. Today, we will discuss some black actors that people don't know passed away. Number one, Artemis Lamont Brentley. Artemis Lamont Bentley was an actor everyone loved to see on their TV screen. He was exceptional in roles as Hakeem Campbell on the UPN sitcom Moesha, as well as his role in The Parkers. He acted as Crazy K in the horror film Tales from the Hood and got a role as Sea Money in the film Wash, featuring Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Lamont was born on October 25, 1973, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He was the son of Lois Bentley and Donald L. Gardison. After some time in Milwaukee, he later moved to Los Angeles with his mother, Lois, who wished to pursue a career as a professional singer. The ambitious Bentley grew up loving the cinema and was attracted to acting. He started practicing signing autographs at the early age of 12, bored with classes and couldn't wait to start his acting career. Bentley dropped out of high school. He worked at movie theaters, fish markets, and grocery stores to reach his goal, practicing acting roles in his free time while waiting for his big break. Later on, he would get very small roles in different television series and movies. But then came his big break, when he was casted in the critically acclaimed South Central in 1994. He had his first feature film role in 1995 in the horror movie Tales from the Hood. This movie portrayed the inner city ganglands and showed the consequences of a gang lifestyle. With an impressive performance in South Central, the creator, Ralph Farquhar, offered Bentley an acting role in the series Moesha, where he played the role of Hakeem Campbell, the always hungry friend of Moesha. This series ran for six seasons on UPN. With the end of Moesha, he still had some acting roles while also getting into rapping. He partnered with March Meeks, aka Cartier, and Tyson Pearson, Typhoon, to form the recording group Uprise. He was featured as Sea Money in the 2001 movie, The Wash, featuring Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. He also got to portray Tupac Shakur in the biopic Too Legit, The MC Hammer Story. His last screen appearance was in Spike Lee's crime drama, Sucker Free City. His death was a very tragic one. He was driving alone on Highway 118 near Simi Valley in Ventura County. Witnesses had mentioned that Bentley's car was overspeeding towards the Rocky Peak Fire Road off-ramp. His car ran through a stop sign, sped through a chain-link fence across the street, and went down an embankment. Bentley was ejected from the vehicle into traffic and was struck by five cars. He suffered multiple injuries on different parts of his body and was pronounced dead some minutes later at exactly 12.23 a.m. According to the autopsy report, Artemis Lamont Bentley died of multiple blunt force injuries. A memorial service was held for him at Serenity Funeral Home in his hometown Milwaukee. He was survived by his two daughters and wife and was buried at Forest Lawn Memorial Park, Hollywood Hills. Number two, Shirley Ann Hemphill. Shirley Ann Hemphill was popular for her comedy acting roles in movies, such as when she acted as waitress Shirley Wilson in the sitcom What's Happening. Although the ABC show enjoyed some little success, it was later canceled due to cast and production issues. Hemphill was born in 1947 and is a native of Asheville, North Carolina. She was born to Richard and Mozella and attended Morristown College, where she majored in physical education. She started her career as a stand-up comedian at a very young age, and as an ambitious young woman, she recorded a series of her comedies and sent the cassette tape to Flip Wilson. Wilson was impressed with her routine and was very helpful in her career. He later invited her to the Flip Wilson show. After she got this good news, she resigned from her job and moved to Los Angeles by bus. She got a waitressing job during the day and performed at the comedy store at night. In 1976, her stand-up routine started gaining popularity, and Joanne Murray, a casting agent, reached out to her. She played a guest role on Good Times and got a guest starring role in All's Fair. Norman Lear, who was very impressed by her performance in Good Times, later called and offered Shirley a major role in a spin-off series, but she turned it down. She got a role in the ABC sitcom What's Happening. She played an impeccable role in the series, but unfortunately, the production was canceled after the actors protested for a salary increase. She got a starring role in her sitcom, One in a Million. The series debuted on January 8, 1980, but ended because it couldn't attract a sufficient audience. Hemphill 
spent most of her time working in different nightclubs around the US and made different guest appearances in TV shows, including The Love Boat and Trapper John MD. She enjoyed a good run in some popular TV shows, including The Tonight Show, starring Jimmy Carson, A&E's An Evening at the Improv, and BET's Black Comedy Showcase, and Black Comedy Tonight. She was also a regular at The Laugh Factory, but Hemphill's rise to stardom was cut short by a rather unfortunate and unprecedented death. On December 10, 1999, she was found dead after almost two weeks of being out of sight at her home in West Covina, California. Her body was discovered by a gardener who looked through a window and saw her lying on her bedroom floor. After an autopsy, it was confirmed that Shirley Ann Hemphill died of kidney failure. Number 3. Wiley Hughes Draper Jr. Remember the television miniseries, The Jacksons, An American Dream? If you do, you will not forget the man who portrayed the iconic pop star, Michael Jackson, on screen. Draper had started dancing at a very young age and enjoyed skating with his brother, Desmond, at the local skiing rinks in West Virginia. After graduating from college, he worked as a dancer at Disney World and took his big chance to audition to play Michael in the 1992 film, The Jacksons, An American Dream. He eventually got the role. Not only did he play the role well, but his brilliant dance performance also got a lot of praise. While he would agree that he nailed the dance performances, his iconic moonwalk at the Motown 25 performance of Billie Jean was quite extraordinary. The movie was seen by more than 38 million people and received many positive reviews. Wiley Draper seemed destined for a very big future, but despite the movie winning an Emmy Award, Draper didn't land many films or TV offers afterwards. Despite this disappointment, he got invited by Michael Jackson and danced in the video for Remember the Time. Speaking of remembering things, please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We drop new documentaries every Sunday. Now let's get back to the video. But not getting bigger roles turned out to be the least of Wiley's problems at the time. While the young star was just about to get it on in life, he was tragically diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia in 1993. He died in Los Angeles, at the age of 24. While many of us really wanted to see how the young and talented dancer would have turned out, it's sad that his career ended tragically, but he indeed achieved some of the biggest movie roles after acting as the greatest pop star ever, and that memory will remain with us for a long time to come. His family set up a charity in his name a year after his death, the Wiley Draper Foundation. The Wiley Draper Foundation supports young artists and receives awareness for bone marrow donation in the African American community. Number 4. Tara McMullen Shalva McMullen was known by her stage name, Tara Correa McMullen. She played Graciela Reyes, a gang member, on the CBS television series Judging Amy. She also co-starred in Rebound alongside Martin Lawrence. Tara Correa McMullen was born in 1989 in Westminster, Vermont. She later moved with her mother and elder sister to Southern California before moving to Venice and Los Angeles. She attended Venice High School and was a member of the school choir. She got her first movie role in the movie Rebound due to her mother's recommendation while working for the casting company. Her mother was working for a casting company at the time. Tara was later picked and would appear in several episodes during the sixth season of Judging Amy. She also had a role in Nickelodeon's Zoe 101. It's really sad that she died in 2005 at a very young age. The 16-year-old Korea McMullen had just moved into her own apartment in Inglewood, California. Before her death, she was dating a gang member who was 26 years old at the time. One late evening, on October 21st, 2005, she was shot to death in front of her house by a gang member, Damian Watts. Damien Watts was arrested and charged with murder four years later. He was convicted of Korea McMullen's murder and was sentenced to five life sentences without parole on February 27, 2009. In 2007, Tara Korea McMullen was profiled on the East documentary series Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Number 5. Fred Rerun Berry Fred Allen Berry, also known as Fred Rerun Berry, was a sensational actor who graced American TV screens and popular shows like The Saturday Night Live, where he appeared in the third episode and Soul Train Dance Music Show. Barry grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. As a child, he loved dancing and wanted to be an actor from a very young age. He joined the Los Angeles-based dance troops, known as The Lockers, and appeared on shows like Saturday Night Live with them in 1975. Did you know 
that Barry was very popular for acting as the character Freddy rerun Stubbs on the ABC sitcom What's Happening, alongside Shirley Ann Hemphill. The program was on air for three years, from 1976 to 1979, and that was where he got his nickname Rerun. He was popular for his red beret, suspenders, and the dance moves that he also performed in The Locker Show. While he was a very talented actor, Barry struggled with drugs and alcohol throughout his life. In an interview with People Magazine, he shared how he became a millionaire at 29, was overwhelmed by the stress of success, and started trying to slim down. This led him to drugs and alcohol. While he has been experimenting with drugs from a very young age, it became severe as he grew older and became more successful since he could afford more drugs. He attempted to take his life on three different occasions. After some years of battling with his drug use and alcohol abuse, he recovered and started attending churches. He later became a motivational speaker and even became a Baptist minister. He was later diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Fred Allen Berry was married to four different women and had three children. On October 21, 2003, he was found dead at his Los Angeles home. He had suffered a stroke. He died at the age of 52 and is buried at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills of Los Angeles. Number 6. Michelle Doris Thomas This pretty face appeared in movies and sitcoms like The Cosby Show, as Justin Phillips, and as Myra Monkhouse on the ABC CBS sitcom Family Matters. Michelle Thomas was born in Brooklyn, Massachusetts on September 23, 1968. Her parents were both musicians and actors. Her father, Dennis Thomas, was a saxophonist and founding member of Cool and the Gang. Michelle Thomas was a student at West Essex High School. Her mother was a stage actress, and Michelle always followed her to the theater and watched her rehearsals. Her mother inspired her into acting and was her first acting coach. She later participated in the Miss Talented Teens with encouragement from her mother's friends who had once heard her sing. Thomas was crowned as Miss Talented Teen New Jersey at the state level. And at the age of 15, she was crowned Miss Talented Teen International in Montego Bay, Jamaica, among 35 other contestants. She got her first television commercial role in 1983 and then later appeared in Soul Train with Hal Jackson. This was the same year she won the Talented Teen International pageant. Michelle got another role in The Cosby Show, which ran for two years. She acted in the role of Theo Huxtable's girlfriend. After the show ended, she got into different television roles, such as A Man Called Hawk, which was released in 1989. She also featured in Thea in 1994, and even got a role in Dream Date in 1989. Thomas had an amazing voice, which got her roles in music videos for artists like Mint Condition, Chub Rock, and Drew Hill. She was also a guest host in Soul Train, a music series that ran for 16 months from May 1996 to March 1997. She got a role in Family Matters in 1993, and for five years, she played the role of Myra Monkhouse. At the time, she started dating Steve Urkel. At the end of the sitcom, she got another role in the daytime soap, The Young and the Restless, where she acted as an aspiring singer and the love interest of Malcolm Winters. In 1998, she had to stop acting and took a break from the series due to her poor health. The previous year, she had been diagnosed with a rare cancer. She had her first surgery to remove the tumor in 1998 before landing the role in The Young and the Restless. A few months later, she had another surgery after a cancerous growth ruptured. Later that same year, on December 23rd, at the age of 30, Thomas died. A Muslim funeral was held for her three days later, as she had requested, and she was later buried in New Jersey. Number 7. Shirlene Teresa Lynn Thigpen With her appearance in multiple TV shows and series, Lynn Thigpen was just so beautiful to watch. While many would remember her for her role as the chief of Acme Crime Net in the movie Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, some will remember her for her role in An American Daughter and The District. Shirlene was born in Joliet, Illinois in 1948. She obtained a degree in teaching and had a brief career as a high school English teacher before she eventually left the teaching profession to pursue a career in acting. She studied theater at the University of Illinois on an acting fellowship. After her studies, she moved to New York City in 1971 and began her career 
as a stage actress. She enjoyed a lot of success, taking different acting roles in several musicals, such as Godspell, The Night That Made America Famous, The Magic Show, Working, and Tintipest. In 1997, she won the Tony Award for her portrayal of Dr. Judith Kaufman in the movie An American Daughter. She was also the Associate Artistic Director of the acclaimed off-Broadway theater Circle Repertory Company, working together with Austin Pendleton, who served as the Artistic Director. We will remember Lynn for acting as the mother of a murder victim in the remake of Shaft in 2000. She also acted as the mother of an expelled student in the movie Lean On Me. She was also seen in several television shows and series and was very popular for playing the chief in the PBS Children's Geography game show, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego? She also played Luna in the television show, Bear in the Big Blue House. Lynn Thigpen appeared in different episodes in movies like Gimme a Break, L.A. Law, Law and Order, The Days and Nights of Molly Dodd, Homicide, Life on the Street, Sesame Street, 30-something, and many other shows. She was nominated for six Daytime Emmy Awards. Thigpen suffered a cerebral hemorrhage and died on March 12, 2003, in her home in California. The autopsy showed that she had an acute cardiac dysfunction, a non-traumatic systemic and spontaneous intraventricular hemorrhage, and a hemorrhage in the brain. She was interred at Elmhurst Cemetery in her hometown in Illinois. Her tragic death put a hold on several film projects she was involved in. Production of Bear in the Big Blue House was put on hold for three years, and most of the cast had mentioned how much they missed her on set. Tara Money, a Bear co-star who played the character Shadow, said that the crew's hearts just weren't in it anymore. A nonprofit foundation was established in her name by family and friends. Number 8. Michael Talaferro Michael Talaferro was known for his role in the movies Bad Boys, Life, and The Replacements. While some may know him for his intimidating stature and fierce look, his acting style and roles seem to fit him very well. He was a former football player, signed by the Washington Redskins, and played two seasons in the USFL with the Denver Gold. He first appeared on TV in 1993 as a security guard in the film Sister Act 2, Back in the Habit. He also appeared in other TV roles, such as Bad Boys, Life, Half Past Dead, Ride or Die, You Got Served, and Blue Hill Avenue. He was the director of Steppen, the movie, which was completed in 2007. Talaferro grew up in Fort Worth, Texas with his elder brother and three sisters. He attended Texas Christian University. Although he wasn't married, he was engaged to Kathy L. Tyree and they had four children. While we saw him in movies as fierce and scary looking in the many roles he acted in, his family and friends described Talaferro as a soft and kind person with a good heart. He was a Christian and attended a Christian school. He suffered a stroke in 2006 that led to his death. Talaferro died on May 4, 2006, in Los Angeles, California, at the age of 44. He was interred at Spring Hill Cemetery in Brooksville, Florida. Number 9. Natalie DeSell Reed If you were a fan of Medea's Big Happy Family, you'll remember this beautiful actress, Natalie DeSell Reed. We played the role of Tammy. Natalie was in other popular shows, including BAPS, Def Jam's How to Be a Player, Set It Off, and Cinderella. She was also a part of the television series Built to Last, For Your Love, and Eve. DeSell Reed was born in Louisiana, and she attended Peabody Magnet High School, and later went on to further her education at Grambling State University, where she developed a deep interest in acting and theater. She later got into one of the theater groups and appeared in different productions while she was there. She started her acting career properly in 1996 and was featured in the movie Set It Off. We also remember her in the 1997 Disney movie, Cinderella, where she played the role of an evil stepsister, Minerva. She also starred in Medea's Big Happy Family and was a guest star in Family Matters. Natalie acted in the role of Janie Eggins on Eve for three seasons and became popular for her exceptional role as Mickey in BAPS. Giselle Reed married Leonard Reed in 2003 and had three children. In December 2020, her family announced her passing after a long colon cancer battle. She died at the age of 53. In attendance at her funeral were several celebrities, including Issa Rae, Eve, Robison Pete, Shannon Kane, and Shad Bow Wow Moss. 
In an Instagram post, Halle Berry, a co-star in the show, expressed her love for Natalie, stating that she represented real black women and not what they were perceived to be by media houses. She said that Natalie remained true to herself, despite being underrated, passed over, and denied the platform she deserved. Despite all her struggles, her light continues to shine, and she will be greatly admired by people of all ages who grew up watching her and those who knew her best. Number 10. Lloyd Avery The last, though not the least, on our list of black actors who you probably didn't know have died is Lloyd Fernandez Avery II. Very few people knew his real name, and many fans will only remember him as Lloyd Avery II due to his role in John Singleton's Oscar-nominated film Boys in the Hood. In this movie, Avery was a gang member. Most people will recall his scene in the movie as he leaned out of the window of the bright red 1988 Hyundai XL and took out a gun to shoot at Morris Chestnut's character as Ricky Baker, a promising high school football star, as he runs for his life in the gang-infested neighborhood of Crenshaw in Los Angeles. While he may have portrayed the character of a gangster, Lloyd has always been passionate about becoming a musician from a very young age. He later developed a strong interest in films and decided to pursue a career in that direction. While growing up, he was considered the class clown and was often seen driving his brown pinto. After starring in his first movie with Singleton, he appeared again in the next movie, Poetic Justice, released in 1993. He also got a role in the 2000 film Lockdown and played as G-Ride in Shot It. Despite his amazing acting career, in 2001, after working on Shot, he was arrested and charged with double homicide for shooting two random people and was sentenced to life imprisonment. Avery seemed to have lived out his role in Boys in the Hood in real life. That was the beginning of Avery's very tragic end. While in prison, he had a Satanist cellmate named Kevin Robbie. Avery believed he could convert Robbie and thought God had put him in that cell for a purpose. Robbie was a paranoid schizophrenic and was locked up for raping and killing his sister. Robbie narrated to the prison authorities that Avery was trying to convert him to Christianity, which got them fighting. This violence led Robbie to choke Avery unconscious, which made him bleed into his lungs. He recounted that he had then placed Avery's body in bed and under covers so that the guards would not be aware of his death. Robbie then went on to paint the cell walls with Avery's blood as part of the satanic rituals intended as a warning to God. It took the correctional officers about 38 hours to find the body of Avery, where it was positioned into a pentagram that Robbie had drawn on the cell block floor. This video was crazy, but if you want to learn some black history they'll never teach us in school, click the video on the screen right now. We'll see you over there.